So after a period of time of very little development within the tadpoles, we're now entering a time when there is some rapid development. Most of the tadpoles are beginning to get their back legs and some are pretty well developed. One tadpole even has begun to grow his front legs. One's come out, the other one will probably come out a bit later on today, maybe overnight, we'll have to wait and see. But what that means is he's going to be needing to leave the water very soon. So we can need to change the setup from one of these tanks to a more dry land environment for the frog when it needs to come out. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to do that and what you need to set it up. So welcome to this week's episode of Frog Watch. So what I've done since the last episode is I've taken all the tadpoles from this tank and I've put them into this tank. This tank was set up a couple of weeks after this one and so is a little bit cleaner. This one's really quite thickly grown with algae now on the sides of the tanks and the stone's pretty bad. Uh, this one looks a lot cleaner. Um, so we're keeping them in here and what I'm going to do now is empty out the water. I'm just going to throw away these stones. I'll move the plants over into this one and uh, keep them for a bit longer. I'll get this all cleaned up and then I will show you how to set this tank up ready for the frogs when they start uh, coming out of the water. Um, and now if you're wondering why I'm able to put all the tadpoles into this tank, whereas the reason I've got two tanks set up is because I had too many tadpoles, well I'll explain that uh, towards the end of the video, so stick around for that. Um, but right, right now I'm going to get this cleaned up and then we'll get into showing you how to set it all up. So while I'm cleaning out the tanks, I'll leave you with some shots of the tadpoles and I'll be back soon to show you that setup. So we have an empty tank ready to set up for the frogs, so let me show you how to do that. The first thing I use is this orchid bark. It's a reptile terrarium substrate. There are other uh, options you can use as well, but this is what I always go for, with bark. All I'm going to do is place some of this at the bottom of the tank. The next thing I'm going to add is this moss. It's a live plant and it's really good for holding moisture. We're going to place a few clumps of that around into the tank. So I'm going to do that. The last thing I'm going to add is this water dish. Okay, so just to give you a little bit more context about the bark and the moss that I'm using and why they're good. 
The bark is a great substrate. It holds moisture really well because amphibians obviously need, they need to be wet. They don't need to live in water. That's a common mistake people make. They don't need to be under the water, but they do need to remain moist. Their skin needs to be moist. They don't want to dry out. So you want to use things that will keep the moisture, but giving them a solid surface to be able to walk on. Uh, so the bark is really good for that. It says it holds moisture and it's just kind of decorative and looks quite nice. The moss is the same kind of thing really. Um, it raises the humidity levels of the tank, so keeping the whole area moist and humid, uh, which reptiles and amphibians will like. So the frogs will uh, get on well with that. And if they begin to dry out, they can crawl into the moss and they can uh, use the moisture that's held in it uh, to be able to keep themselves moist and healthy. Um, and that's pretty much all it really is. Just a couple of different things to hold the moisture. The bark is obviously a bit drier than the moss, so they can kind of move in and around where the, uh, the environment suits them. And that's pretty much it. Now one other thing that you can do to keep the tank moist is by spraying it with water with a mister, something that we'd use on like plants and that sort of thing. Um, I usually mist the tank about uh, once every day or a couple of days, whenever it begins to look a little bit dry. Um, and, and obviously remember to use dechlorinated water as well as in the water dish uh, because chlorine for frogs as well as for tadpoles is very bad for their health and you definitely don't want that. And for this stage that's all there is to it. Only one more thing you're going to need and that is a lid to go on the top because they will escape. And now this particular tank is an aquarium designed for goldfish. The lid that came with it has these cutouts along the side and at the front here which is designed for the wires for various pumps and filters and lights and things to come out of easily. We don't want that because of any gaps the frogs will climb up the side of the tank and they will escape. So all I've done here on this particular one is just cut out some cardboard, punch some holes in for the air and that should block up everything and should prevent them escaping. It has, certainly has done for the last few years that I've done this. And we're done. All we need to do now is to wait for the frogs to be ready to leave the water. The one that I told you about earlier that had one arm, in the time it's taken me to film this episode so far, the other one has popped out, so it does now have both front arms. It was very nearly ready to come out of the water. I'm going to leave it a little bit longer. I may take him out uh, later on tonight and we'll put him into the new tank, but that will be for the next episode. So make sure you join back next week to find out uh, what the next stage in care is going to be for the tadpoles. Um, so uh, right, I wanted to talk to you about something else. Um, now if you've been following along with this series, you may remember that at the beginning of the series I had so many tadpoles, I had to set up the two tanks to fill them both out um, because I had too many, because I wasn't able to take them back to the pond like normal. Um, and they may be wondering why I'm able to stick them all into the one tank and not worry about overpopulation. Well that's because I have a lot less tadpoles now than I did when I first started. Um, now I haven't released any, which does mean unfortunately there's been a very high instance of cannibalism that was in my tank. It's very unusual. Um, it does happen every year. You always get one or two that will fall victim to that. Um, but this year it's been quite a lot um, and it was kind of a bit, a bit surprising. I wasn't really expecting it. Now um, just a bit, of, a bit of context. Normally, I've done this now for years, uh, the normal process is I collect spawn um, at the beginning of the breeding season, put them in the tank, when they hatch out, you have hundreds, uh, potentially, um, because the spawn is really tightly packed, so you can actually get a lot more than you expect. Um, and then what was going to happen is I would let them grow a little bit, and then I would catch most of the tadpoles, release them back into the pond, and only keep enough suitable for the tank that I've got. This year, I couldn't really do that because of the lockdown and the quarantine things that have been going on this year. has been terrible. Um, I wasn't able to get back to the pond, so I've had to keep them all. Um, so I set up two tanks, split them, um, the population between the two tanks, which was just about okay, but I still think they were slightly overpopulated. And I think it's because of that overpopulation that they resorted to a, a higher occurrence of cannibalism than they normally would. Cannibalism is perfectly normal in tadpoles, and I suspect a vast majority of tadpoles out in ponds out in the world do fall victim to cannibalism. Cannabis is actually very nutritious, so the ones that have uh, indulged in it uh, probably gave themselves a really good start um, to, to life uh, because you get a lot of nutrients that you need for your own body by eating something of a similar makeup. Um, hopefully I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that in more detail in another video uh, that I'm, I'm potentially working on possibly. Keep an eye out for that. Um, but yeah, so it's a bit unfortunate. We don't really like it to happen in a controlled environment because it's kind of down to us to stop that from happening uh, by providing enough food and space. Unfortunately, the space, I just, I couldn't do it because I couldn't release them like I normally would. So it is unfortunate and I don't like it, but um, it is a very normal uh, occurrence. 
Um, you will probably find it in your tanks, it might happen. You'll find it out in your ponds and things. Uh, hopefully we, we just try to minimize it. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that this year. Um, next year, hopefully we're not going to be going through this again. So um, hopefully I'll be able to do things normally and we won't have it. I certainly haven't had it to this extent in the previous years. So it's a little bit unfortunate, but it is one of those things that just happens and there's not much you can do about it in these sort of situations. Um, but it does mean that we now have enough population to fit them all into one tank and um, they'll be fine to release the frogs into the new tank when they're ready and uh, everything going forward should be fine. Okay, but that is all I have for you this week. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions about what I've done today and you want to know some more information, do stick it down in the comments section. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it, so let me know. And if you did enjoy it and you want to see more, I've got a whole playlist of these videos that I've been doing this year, plus previous years as well. And come back next Sunday, so make sure you subscribe for another episode of Frog Watch, where we shall see the tadpoles moving into the frog tank once they are ready. So uh, hopefully we'll see you then. Goodbye.